Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. We are recording this podcast Tuesday morning, July 2nd, and Beryl is now a Category 5 hurricane. The first time, a the earliest a Category 5 hurricane has formed this early in the Atlantic, beating Emily out by a couple of weeks. We also have 96L that the chances for development now decreasing to 30% over the next seven days, still following the same path as Beryl. Beryl is moving west-northwest, a pretty good clip at 22 miles per hour. There are hurricane warnings now in effect for Jamaica. The track shifting just a slight bit north closer to Jamaica than it was yesterday. Also tropical storm warnings for Southern Hispaniola and now a hurricane watch for the Cayman Islands, that small pink area right there where you see the arrow. Beryl is expected to maintain its hurricane strength when it makes landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula the early Friday morning. It'll track across the Yucatan Peninsula and currently the strength forecast has it decreasing to tropical storm strength as it enters the Gulf of Mexico Saturday morning and into Sunday morning. We also see a slight shift, ever so slight shift to the northwest on that track. So, Jeff, a lot can change with these storms in a short period of time. Barrel looking very impressive there on the IR satellite. What are your thoughts? What are you seeing? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, this is an impressive, about as impressive of a hurricane as you would get any time of year, um, much less the first couple of days of July here. You see a very well-defined eye. The plane, the NOAA aircraft was in here overnight, um, finding some very impressive winds in the lower levels of the of the hurricane. Possibly starting to see some warming now of the cloud tops. That would, that would be indicative potentially of a little bit of weakening. It's It's very hard to keep hurricanes of this magnitude going very long. So, you know, barrel is, is likely reaching its peak intensity. And we're, we're talking about this in a little bit, but you can see there's a, there's wind shear awaiting right here, not not far at all um, from barrel. And you can see this kind of western side of the storm looks like it's getting kind of smushed. And that's that wind shear starting to impinge on the outflow here on the western side of the system. So, it's likely barrel has has reached its peak intensity or it's very close to it and th there will likely be some weakening and, and we'll get into some of that here over the next uh, few minutes and so looking at the the uh, guidance track so this is the uh, ensemble mean of, of all of the major models so a fairly decent clustering here and, and fairly high confidence now that this is going to be in the vicinity of jamaica potentially Along the southern coast, potentially right over Jamaica, there there is some some possibility it goes even a little bit north of Jamaica. Uh, no matter how you cut it, at this point, it looks like Jamaica is going to get a significant hurricane impact, a major hurricane impact uh, on those on that island. So preparations in this area definitely need to be underway for uh, a hurricane tomorrow. We're talking tomorrow. This will be in the right. vicinity of Jamaica, and then south of the Caymans on Thursday. And then into the Yucatan, and, and now it's probably going to be a little bit north to southern the Hurricane Center forecast track. You know, yesterday we were talking northern Belize, the extreme southern part of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now we're looking a little bit further north. So this potentially would bring uh, a higher level of impact, if you will, towards the Cancun Cozumel area. It may not be the direct center, but it could be bands and gusty winds and all that type of stuff. And, and there is still some potential here for this to shift around a little bit. Uh, as we get into um, later later this week. And you can kind of see here the, the consensus of the forecast and the trend. So the lighter color here is the older and the darker color is the newer. And so this is over the past 24 hours. And so this, this kind of shows you the trend in the consensus of all of the models. And you can see a couple things first. Barrel's tracking a little bit to the north of the consensus here in the near term. That's been something we've noticed. Not overly surprising that that, that is happening. These powerful hurricanes tend to track a little bit more to the right. Um, and then you can see the, the trend here south of Jamaica has been for this to come closer and closer to the island of Jamaica. And then also a little bit further north here on, on the Yucatan Peninsula. And then the, the trend really in the Gulf of Mexico, you start to get a, a much wider range of 
possibilities in the Gulf of Mexico. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But the trend here also has been uh, northward over the last 24 hours. And the reason why is, is because of what's going to happen uh, over the southern plains in Texas as we get into this weekend. So this is current. And, and what you see here is um, this big 590 a uh, four decameter high pressure ridge sitting over, oh, the Arklatex back into Western Tennessee, ridging back into Texas. So this is the big high pressure that's sitting over us right now. The hot is hot, it's humid. Uh, we can't get rain really to form. And so this obviously sitting on top of us would steer a barrel to the west. And that's why it's going to be making that uh, kind of west, northwest or westerly track across the Caribbean stuck under uh, this big ridge of high pressure that extends back out to the Atlantic. But what is this going to look like as we get into this weekend? So this is Sunday morning um, around sunrise, and you can see this big high that is sitting over us now is no longer sitting on top of the southern plains of Texas. It has moved over here to toward the southeast United States, ridging back down into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and it has been replaced with this what we call a trough, uh, across the central plain. So we have high pressure here over California, back into the southwest, high pressure here over the southeast and Florida, and then this break between these two ridges here across the southern plains in Texas. So this potentially opens a doorway for barrel in the Gulf of Mexico to gain some latitude, but there's a lot of questions on what does barrel look like when it gets into the southern Gulf of Mexico? We're pretty confident it is not going to be what barrel looks like now. Right. So we're not looking at a category five hurricane coming into the Gulf of Mexico this weekend, but we could be looking at a tropical storm. And the question is, is barrel, where does barrel come off of the coast of the Yucatan? Is it further to the south? And it doesn't necessarily feel or get the, the pull of this trough to pull it further to the northwest. Does it come off a little bit further north and it feels this trough a little bit more and turns more toward the northwest? The other question is how strong is barrel? If barrel is a weaker system and further to the south, it's not going to feel the pull of this trough as much. It's going to be steered more by the low level flow and go more west, northwest, or even westerly towards the Mexican coast. And this is what the European has been showing um, in, 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 some of the, in some of the other guidance, the European ensembles. But the GFS and some of the other models have, have started to trend a little bit further north. And you can see this here also on the, on the uh, European, very similar setup, ridge to the west, ridge of high pressure to the east, trough in the middle. But notice barrel is a lot further. This is the same time. This is Sunday morning. Mm. And notice the difference between the, G the GFS has barrel or, or its remnants up here along the Texas coast by Sunday morning. And the European has barrel way down here in the Bay of Campeche. So not only do we have a difference in the intensity and location of the storm, um, we also have a, a, a timing difference now in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, that is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on. You know, some of these models are very quick. Others are slower. And if I had to kind of go in one direction or now, I'd probably go with the slower models because as, as systems reach the end of high pressure areas and start to try, if they're going to try to turn in any direction, they tend to slow down. Yeah. Um, but you can see here the difference on the European is the trough is here. We have the same setup. But barrel is much further to the south. And, and at this point, the question is, would this even connect with this and be pulled northward? Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty in the Gulf of Mexico. And a lot of that is driven by what happens here over the next couple of days with barrel. Um, I showed this yesterday. This is the water vapor. Here's a great, uh, you know, this category five hurricane. You can see the strong winds approaching the storm from the west. So this is all the shear that is likely to get into this later today and, and start to undercut that. And, you know, it's, it's fairly confident we're going to see weakening. And I, and, and, and I want to make, I want to make clear of that, like, barrel is a very scary hurricane right now, but it is going to weaken as it comes west. And, and that's a little bit kind of con uh, contradictory to what we would normally see in the Western Caribbean. Typically, we see development in the Western Caribbean, but with the shear and all that, we expect barrel to weaken. And so, again, potentially major hurricane in Jamaica weakening likely below a major hurricane for the Yucatan, and then it continues to go down. So this would be the landfall area right here on the Yucatan. You can see the, the, the faster drop in the intensity 
most likely gone to a tropical storm. And still, we've we've been talking about this, still not a lot of recovery here in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, maybe some slight intensification, but it, it doesn't look like Beryl's going to get out into the Gulf and, and really start deepening or really start intensifying quickly. And, and so that's important to understand is if you're in the Western Gulf, Texas, Louisiana, this is not a big major hurricane potentially coming in that direction. There could be something in the Western Gulf, the Southwestern Gulf, there will likely be something, but it is it is going to be a shell of its former self as it gets out here into the Gulf of Mexico. And we'll just have to watch, do conditions change between now and the weekend that makes things maybe a little more favorable. But right now, this is this is all looking like a, a, a modest to maybe a higher end tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a lot of scary stuff out there. Deterministic models are being shared. I've seen some stuff. I don't even know what it is in the last 24 hours being shared. Um, and, and, and I wouldn't put a lot of stock into that because, you know, based on the intensity forecast and what the hurricane center is saying, um, this is going to be likely some sort of tropical storm in the Southern and, and Western Gulf of Mexico. And, um, you know, like we've been saying, the messages here over the last couple of days, pay attention, watch the forecast once or twice a day, uh, stay up to date. But even if you see this track trending further north, just understand that, that that it's going to be a very different system in the Gulf of Mexico than what we're dealing with now. Yeah. And as we've been saying for the last few days, if you have travel plans down to the Yucatan, Cancun, Cozumel, definitely want to check with local your local hotels and, and see what their plans are and maybe reconsider those travel plans. If you're traveling anywhere along the Gulf Coast, Texas, Louisiana, Florida, don't change your plans right now, but definitely keep an eye on the tropics on a daily basis. And Jeff, I noticed the QPF models are starting to pick up um, with that trough coming down. Uh, the front will uh, enter the northern part of the state of Texas Saturday. It, it increases the rain chances for the Gulf Coast to 40 percent that's mainly due to the front then after that there's a lot of uncertainty depending on the track and, and strength of barrel but it is picking up some rain for the early part of the week from barrel maybe some of the northern bands things like that but don't take cancer your plans just keep an eye on the tropics at least on a daily basis and you can do that right here subscribe to our weather insights youtube channel to get the latest on the tropics be sure to share it with family and friends so they can do the same and join us on the next weather insights podcast